Fiddler. High speed Soviet fighter. Wagon. The SU 11. All weather. Long range. Advanced fire control system. Deadly air to air capability. Fish bed. The MiG 21. The latest Soviet fighter exported to satellite countries. Maneuverability. Comparable to the top U.S. Navy fighter. Fox Bat. The MiG-23. Another new high-performance Soviet fighter. Higher top speed. Higher altitude than the fighter in the current Navy inventory. The next identifiable fighter threat. Added to this threat, there is Blinder and Badger. Soviet bombers capable of launching any of four different missiles at standoff ranges up to 150 miles. In addition, there is the ever-present threat from surface-to-surface -surface or surface-to-air missiles from either shore stations or missile-carrying Soviet ships. The basic problem is that our stable of Navy fighters to meet these threats is rapidly losing its edge. Our F-8 Crusader was started in late 1952, over 15 years ago. It became operational 11 years ago. Our F-4 was a clearly superior fighter when it became operational in 1961. Now the gap is closing. It is a tribute to the skill of the nation's fighter pilots that a high kill ratio has been maintained in Vietnam. We cannot depend on maintaining this margin indefinitely. The time has come to equal the skill of our fighter pilots with a far superior fighter aircraft, one that will be superior now and for the next 15 years. The new Navy fighter, the F-14, is an air superiority weapon system designed around a combat weapons load of four sparrows, but with configuration flexibility that include Phoenix and Sidewinder missiles, coupled with an M61 gun. It is built to meet the enemy in the air anywhere, and the threat to the attack carrier striking force during the mid-1970s to 1980s. This F-14 has been the subject of some discussion in the press and magazine, particularly so in Washington. Some right and some wrong. The time has come to set the story straight. This is the first of a series of film briefing reports concerning the F-14 program. I am determined that the naval aviators of the fleet get the straight word on this great new fighter. To provide for a wide margin of air superiority in any operational area and meet any threat to our strike forces, the Navy, with Grumman Aircraft, has under development a brand new carrier-based fighter. Designed to ensure fighter deployment in a minimum of time, the F-14 will use the flight-proven TF-30P-412 engines and the new but developed AUG-9 weapons control system. At the same time, the program provides for planned growth factors in speed and range to guarantee superiority in the years to come. This new weapon system is the F-14. The F-14 is all fighter. Multi-mission capability has not been permitted to dilute the original concept or degrade the performance required to outfly and outfight any aircraft encountered. Comparable in size to the F-4, it is a twin-tailed, swing-wing, twin-engined airplane carrying a mix of weapons and a two-man crew, pilot and missile control officer. A one-piece bubble canopy and tandem seating provide all-around clear vision that enables the fighter crew to easily detect and maintain visual contact with the enemy. The swing-wing design provides optimal geometry over a full spectrum of speeds. Swept forward, the wings provide the lift for low wind-over-the-deck launches 
and on carrier landings at 120 knots. In addition, when swept forward, they provide endurance required for combat air patrol missions, coupled with instant flexibility to accelerate to supersonic dash speeds. Swept back to 68 degrees, the airplane is just what it appears to be, a high-performance, highly maneuverable fighter. The F-14 weapon system will include a three-phased program of development. It is a program of planned growth to assure ever-increasing performance as advanced technology engines and avionics become available. The three phases are designated A, B, and C. Phase A will use the flight-proven TF-30P-412 engines, coupled with the AUG-9 weapon control system, a low-risk program that will permit deployment of the airplane in the shortest possible time. Carried in external pods, both for ease of maintenance and to provide optimum straight-line airflow to the compressor face, each engine will deliver nearly 20,500 pounds of thrust. Two engines will make the F-14A capable of speeds of Mach 2.4 in combat configuration. The second phase of development, the F-14B, introduces the advanced technology engine into the basic F-14A airframe, providing a total of 55,000 pounds of thrust at a combined weight saving of over 1,200 pounds. As the airframe was sized and configured from the onset to accept the advanced technology engines, only minimal modifications to the inlet will be required. For the third phase, an F-14C will carry an even more advanced multi-mission avionic suit, but using the F-14B engine-airframe combination unchanged. The design of the F-14 provides a combination of thrust to weight and a wing loading that result in very high fighter agility, the ability to engage and disengage the enemy at will, with maneuverability to bring weapons to bear on all enemy aircraft. In the air combat maneuverability environment, the F-14 will have no equal. The first chart indicates the outstanding dash times of the airplane on a standard day in level flight acceleration. Time in minutes is on the left, Mach speed along the bottom. The blue line indicates a combat loading of four sparrows. The orange line shows the same conditions for a loading of six Phoenix. A mock sweep programmer will automatically position the wing for best fighter performance. High G performance is assured over the entire speed spectrum. Load factors in G are on the left. Specific excess power in feet per second across the bottom. Flight conditions are Mach 0.9 at 10,000 feet, clean configuration, with 50% fuel remaining. The F-4J is indicated in orange. The F-14A is shown in blue, while the F-14B is indicated by the green line. A fast-acting pilot-controlled maneuvering flap enhances combat agility in the subsonic transonic speed ranges. This chart again indicates load factors on the left, Mach numbers on the bottom. The unshaded line on the left indicates G's available without the maneuvering flap. The shaded portion indicates the extra G's available with the flap, both at sea level. The curve on the right hand indicates the same conditions at 15,000 feet. Note how the maneuverability envelope extends smoothly to the structural limits of the airplane. Glove vanes extend from the leading edge of the fixed portion of the wing at Mach 1. This feature offsets the shift in the airplane's aerodynamic center at Mach 1, leaving the horizontal stabilizer free for maneuvering, while minimizing trim drag effects. Our final chart shows the glove vane benefit in instantaneous maneuvering envelopes. Altitude is on the left in thousands of feet. Mach numbers are indicated on the bottom. The solid lines indicate maneuverability without glove vanes at 1G, 3Gs, and 5Gs. 
The shaded areas indicate the improvements provided by the glove vein. These parameters of performance have been achieved by both advanced design and construction techniques that provide a relatively lightweight airframe coupled with the extremely efficient use of available engine thrust. In the F-14B, the thrust to weight ratio will be of the order of 1.2 at combat weight. This adds up to one thing. Going into combat against any likely threat, the F-14 will be the clearly superior fighter. The F-14 is designed and sized for a modified AUG-9 weapons control system. In the advanced stages of a successful development and test program, the AUG-9 will provide optimum weapons control for both close-in air-to-air engagements as well as the long-range standoff attack. The air combat mode enables rapid selection of any desired air-to-air -air ordnance, M61 gun, Sidewinder missiles, Sparrow missiles, and the Phoenix missile. To give the fighter crew real-time information while in combat, the cockpit has six computer-coupled visual displays. Of primary importance is the pilot's heads-up display. The heads-up display, or HUD as it is sometimes referred to, will provide attack information on the pilot's windshield with the following symbols. The steering symbol, the range scale, and maximum and minimum firing ranges and envelope. In a typical short-range Sparrow attack, the heads-up display will look like this on the pilot's windshield. The heads-up display also has a carrier landing mode that gives the pilot real-time information on his landing glide slope position. For attack steering, the pilot may also refer to the vertical display indicator. Radar homing and warning displays are presented to the pilot on the horizontal display, along with navigation information. The missile control officer has, in addition to his tactical information display, a detailed data display which gives him raw radar information. He also has a radar homing and warning display that supplies enemy radar information as well as surface-to-surface -surface missile threat information. These displays provide the F-14 crew with the total informational input required to fight and survive in any operational area, but are especially valuable against the ground-controlled interceptor threat in the ACM environment. The F-14 weapon system has been optimized for the basic Four Sparrow fighter mission. In this configuration, the F-14 will have sufficient internal fuel to escort strike groups on 500-mile range missions without in-flight refueling, and still be capable of two minutes of air combat over the target at combat power. Weapons flexibility is achieved without affecting prime mission performance by preloading other ordnance, such as Phoenix missiles, on interchangeable weapons rail segments. This palletized concept for Phoenix allows the F-14 design weight to be held to that required on the Sparrow Sidewinder dogfighter only. Phoenix are carried strictly as an overload and do not affect the basic weight of the F-14. The pallets are on board only when the weapons requiring them are carried, otherwise they remain in the magazine. Weapons configurations can include combinations such as six Sparrows and four Sidewinders, six Phoenix missiles, four Sidewinders, and two 450-gallon drop tanks, or combinations of Mark 83 iron bombs with sidewinders or Mark 84 iron bombs with sidewinders. In addition to the wide variety of stores that can be carried, the M61 integral gun provides the necessary firepower for close-in air-to-air combat. 
The F-14 has been designed for simplified maintainability and rapid turnaround between missions. As an example of this simplified maintainability, the Mark 61 gun can be aligned with the aircraft datum line without jacking or leveling the aircraft. A high-intensity beam is directed on the calibrating lens attached to the barrel. The gun mounts are then adjusted until the azimuth and elevation needles on the alignment scale are zeroed. The technique is so simple that the gun may be aligned on a carrier deck between launches. Six Phoenix missiles are loaded in 18 minutes using standard Aero 21A skids. Integral hoists are provided for raising and lowering rail segments. The nacelle pod installation of the power plants provides quick access for routine inspection or engine oil replacement. 80% of engine accessory corrective maintenance and replacement can be accomplished with these doors open. In addition to routine maintenance, the doors permit easy engine removal and replacement. The entire task, removal and replacement of one engine, can be accomplished in three hours by four maintenance personnel using a Model 4000A engine stand. Power plants are interchangeable between right and left nacelles. They can be removed from the side or the rear. To facilitate quick repairs and shorten turnaround times, rapid determination of avionic equipment status is provided by a computer-processed built-in systems test. Automatic in-flight fault detection will indicate a failure of a replaceable assembly on the missile control officer's tactical information display. Onboard checkout means that the fighter crew can have full confidence in Phoenix missile readiness prior to committing the F-14 to an engagement. With excellent accessibility, corrective maintenance of 80% of the avionic equipment is possible without work stands. For more avionic accessibility, the nose landing gear strut can be lowered 14 inches. To replace an avionics unit, front-mounted connectors and quick-release latches make this quickly possible without using tools. Avionic equipment will be compatible with the Navy's versatile avionics shop test system, known as VAST. The F-14A, first of a three-model program, is scheduled for first flight in January 1971, exactly two years after contract award. This trials will commence in June 1972, with fleet introduction in April of 1973. Similar to the history of the F-4, the great majority of airplanes built will be F-14Bs, using the advanced technology engines, and marking the second phase of the program. The F-14B is scheduled for first flight in 1972, with fleet introduction in early 1974. We may be able to advance the F-14B if the engine development program continues to go well. As engines become available, F-14As can be retrofitted. The third mode, the F-14C, will have the F-14A-B airframe and the F-14B advanced technology engines, but will be equipped with avionics that take advantage of ongoing advances in micro-miniaturization and solid-state electronics. In addition, it will significantly improve air-to-ground weapons delivery, adding all-weather to visual. The F-14C will be introduced when the new avionics are developed and ready. As you have seen, the F-14 will be an optimal combination of speed, acceleration, maneuverability, and radius of action, including a fire control system with multiple weapons options. It has been designed from inception to grow in performance as technology permits, and is well suited to Navy fighter missions and air-to-air -air combat. Fighter sweeps, combat air patrol, and all-weather interception for many years to come. The F-14 has been evaluated as a low-risk technical program, and it is. But there are risks other than those of hardware. These are the challenges that fighter crews face 
each time they catapult to meet the enemy. The odds can be optimized only by introducing the finest fighting machine the Navy can procure. In the final analysis, however, the effectiveness of a weapon system rests with the men who use it. And even as they go forth, time and time again, to meet the ever-present threats that face our nation, they will continue, as they have always, to give their best. We could ask no more of them. In developing this weapon system for them, we will do no less. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.